What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV here, back again with another video. Tottenham obviously have completed the signing of Ivan Perisic from Inter Milan a couple of days ago to help me discuss the transfer and to give um, an Inter Milan side of things. I'm very thankful for Anil, the Inter Milan fan. He's going to he's giving us a bit of his time to talk to us about everything you need to know about Ivan Perisic, and we're going to be talking about Stony, Lautaro Martinez, and anything else Inter Milan related you need to know. Anil, thank you for joining me today. Absolutely. No problem. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. No, really appreciate your time. Um, let's start with obviously the new signing. Tottenham completed Ivan Perisic uh, on a free transfer um, a few days ago. A lot of Tottenham fans are very, very excited um, by this transfer. Obviously, he was in Serie A team of the season last season. He's been into Milan now, I believe, about seven years, actually. It's quite a long time when you think yeah. about it. Didn't realise he'd been there that long. Um, give me like an overview, potentially, of how Perisic is, is done at Inter Milan overall. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so with our, when he first arrived, uh, a lot of criticism came about um, because we were playing 4-3-3 and, you know, at the time he was more of an attacking midfielder rather than a, a left wing back that he is today. Um, and and I, I, I give the most sort of credit, I'd say, to, to uh, one of our managers, Pioli, before Conte, uh, he's the one who initially started playing him as a as a left winger. Winger, um, he's ambidextrous, so he plays really well with the both his feet, and and uh, and and that's sort of what initially started as um, as his his rise uh, among the Inter fans. Um, it, it was the 2016-17 season where where he had been converted as a left winger, and he just kept giving assist after assist after assist. And it was, it was, it was the link between him and Acardi that really, um, really, really kicked it off for us. And uh, it was, it was, it was a marquee signing in, in terms of, in terms of where we were headed as well. Um, you know, at the time we were, we were a Europa League team and never really challenging for anything and stuff like that. And then, and then it was, it was the season after where, we had Spalletti as coach and he's the one who sort of brought the best out of Perisic in terms of starting it. And, and, uh, and that's when we got top four, we got champions league football and uh, a season after Spalletti uh, we, we kept him and it was still champions league football. And then after that Conte came in and that's when it really, really, kicked it off completely. Paris has just turned into a beast after that. It was, uh, if you recall, it was also after the World Cup final um, mm -hmm. that we had, uh, we had um, initiated contact with Conte and uh, yeah, he, he just got the best out of him. And, and I, I feel pretty grateful um, having watched him play over the seven years. Um, he proved a lot of doubters wrong, um, you know, coming from, I think it was Wolfsburg, um, mm. where he wasn't he wasn't so good. He wasn't the best, let's say, uh, and and that's sort of the reason why a lot of people criticize him at first, because you know, Inter. You, you look at Inter, a big club, blah blah blah, and then, but then it it makes sense because it was at the time not a top club. So, mm. and um, so yeah, yeah. So it's a bit of a weird one. You obviously you mentioned Antonio Conte was uh, he really exploded under him, especially in over um, the season. Obviously, when you won the league um, and when you finished second, but it was a bit of a strange one because when Conte came in, am I right in saying he actually loaned him out to Bayern Munich uh, yes. for the first season? Um, and the, under the reports, maybe he didn't actually believe he could fit in, in Conte's system. So tell me about that period. Uh, well, if uh, Inter fans were happy that their Perisic was loaned out for first of all, and then why Conte decided to bring him back in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so he had brought him out because Conte, we all know Conte, he likes these super work ethical, like he loves the work ethic of players, right? He, he We've seen it throughout the clubs he's been at. And, and Perisic wasn't exactly the player who you'd count on in terms of, defending and going back, running back, tracking back, whatever you want to call it. And, and so um, that's what, that's what sort of made him send him out on loan because while he was out on loan, he would, he would play at Bayern as a left winger and not track back. 
uh, we we had seen this as well. Uh, you know, he'd come on for Coleman or um, I think no, Ribery wasn't there at the time, but Coleman was the left winger if I wasn't mistaken. Um, so, and then and then after his loan ended, he 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 had his family in Milan anyway, and he decided, okay, he, as as far as I, as far as I know, that he wanted to at least fight for his place at the club. And uh, and and then two years later, we win the league. Um, you know, fast forward, we win mm -hmm. the league, we win the Super Cup, the the Cup, um, all of which he's been instrumental in. And you know, as, as he started playing under Conte, the Conte way, um, we just won, just stream stream steam steam rolled through virtually everything. Um, I mean, his last game for us. Uh, I can I can give as the best example off the top of my head. He scored. It was the cup final, and mm -hmm. we're playing Juventus. He scored two goals in that, two goals, just mm. insane. I mean, what a way to end his career at Inter, right? So unbelievable. Yeah, yeah he's, he's obviously had a, a brilliant uh, end to his career. Um, but as you say, he's he's changed his position, hasn't he? Last last few years, you know, he's predominantly been a winger pretty much his whole career, uh, either cutting in from, either being on the right side or the left. Especially, um, you said developed as a left winger into Milan, but now recently he's been playing left wing back in a, in a maybe a bit of a new role for him. But he's he's made he's become one of the best in Europe in that position. Would you would you agree with that? I absolutely agree. Um, you know, the fact that he's thirty three. A lot of people are saying, oh, look, he's 33, he's going to the Premier League, fast-paced. Yes, it's true. However, we've seen what certain players can do at, at certain ages. We've seen it throughout time. I mean, Thiago Silva at Chelsea, Zlatan when he was at United. So, um, you know, I, I, I certainly think he's got a lot to offer, um, especially with the uncertainty of Regulon. I think he's if, if he's if he's leaving, if I'm not mistaken. I, yeah, I, potentially, yeah. Yeah, so so I I think he's the best the replacement you could get, and 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 forget ability for a second. We talk, let's talk about also uh, the impact he has on the dressing room. It's massive, massive. I mean, he's won a lot of things. Um, he's won the Bundesliga with Dortmund. He's won. Mm -hmm titles in Italy with us and he's been to a World Cup final let alone scored in it so so you, you guys are getting a, a top player big big player um, and yeah and uh, do you think in terms of what he's going to bring in that left wing back role you speak about um, he wasn't uh, tracking back in his early days uh, are you saying that's completely um, changed now? Is he very hard working? Uh, it, it, like he's not going to be quite out defensively as much as he used to be, would you say? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. You know, we he's he's virtually going to be under Conte as well now. Um, mm -hmm. We have a great relationship, uh, and you know the fact that he's thirty three, he'll he'll have that that mentality, that Conte mentality, that winning winning drive. You know. Um, I, so I've got absolutely no doubt, absolutely. And yeah, and I'm, I'm very excited to have him in the Spurs uh, lineup. I think he's going to be a fantastic signing. Mm. Uh, and as well, when you talk about goals and assists uh, coming from wing backs, which is a big uh, part of what Conte demands from his wing backs, um, he's you you very confident that in the Premier League he's going to be able to provide that. Oh yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, he's he's just brilliant. I mean. I've I, I I could write so much about about Paris at this time at Inter. I mean, he he's guaranteed. Um, let's put it this way: he's guaranteed to win something at Tottenham, uh, especially under Conte, who will get the best out of him. Uh, I mean, we've mm -hmm. seen it with 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 uh, Doherty. Um, you know, so mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, you, you, Tottenham's getting a, a top top player. Um, and uh, he, he's very versatile as well. So he can play up front um, if mm -hmm. needed and if required. He scored penalties for us with his left foot and right foot. Um, okay. So, yeah. So there, there you go. Um, you know, that, shows how, actually, yeah, that shows how ambidextrous he is, doesn't it? Um, yes, yeah. yeah, so that's very, very exciting. Obviously, on a free transfer as well, uh, paying no fee. Uh, that's also good. So you think that's going to be a steal for Tottenham? 
Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. The fact that he's 33, is, is, I think, personally has nothing to do with it. I think he's just a top, top player. Would you have liked him to stay in? I, yeah, I think so. I think so. However, with that said, um, you know, I do believe in, in growth and development, uh, at least in football, in a football sense. And, you know, we, we, we signed Gozens as a replacement. I think that was a mm. move. Um, so, you know, we, we, I think in the long term, it was, it was probably for the best, especially, you know, like I said, ending his career in that way that he did, I think nothing tops that. So, okay, brilliant. Let's move on then to talking about, uh, oh, have I lost you? No, nope. there you are. Back. Um, that's it. Uh, let's move on now. Talk about Alessandra Bastoni. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, talk, transfer rumours at the moment uh, that Tottenham are after him. Obviously, um, apparently Antonio Conte has made him his number one transfer target this summer. He's obviously an Inter Milan boy. He's now about 23 years of age. Yeah. Uh, really coming on. I think Conte gave him his debut at Inter Milan, but he's really come on to become one of the most up and, uh, best up-and-coming centre-backs in European football right now. Mm -hmm. um, what's your feeling on the potential transfer? Do you believe there's any chance of it happening? Do you think that you would let him go for a good fee? Um, or do you think that he should be untouchable? What's your, what's your opinion on it? Well, that, that's a very interesting topic because it's, it's all over the place now, right? Um, I mean, mm -hmm. there's so much going on with this, uh, especially with Romano as well, like talking a lot about it. So I do believe there is a lot there. Um, you've seen, I, I don't know how reliable the particular source is, but uh, apparently Conte reached out to him and uh, he said no on an initial basis. However, it's not, it wasn't a firm no, as far as I understand. Um Though Inter's owners are are uh, are very um, open, uh, I I would say to selling him because I mean we've seen it even last season. Um, Lukaku and Hakimi would have deemed untouchable at at first sight, but then you know they saw the money and I'm talking about the owners here. The the owners they saw uh -huh. the fee and they said yeah, I mean we're not going to reject that. And um, so that's that's virtually what happened with that. So I, I would I would suggest that there is something going on um, as sad as I am, obviously, um, you know, Bastoni, as you said yourself, he's he's an Inter fan. He's an Inter boy, uh, grew up in Milan. So um, obviously I'd be quite sad about it. But, you know, that's the game. Um, if Spurs were to get him, kudos, because top, top player, top. Absolutely. Do you believe he's your best centre back? Uh, no, I would I would say Skriniar is, but um, that that has a lot to do with his experience, I think. But uh, I I do I do love Bastoni. He's in in the back three. He's instrumental, especially going forward, because um, he he like he's described it himself uh, in the past that he he loves to go forward and he's essentially an attacking midfielder in in a center back position. Um, so, so it's exactly what Conte likes. Yeah, exactly. Massive, just absolutely great player. So, so you would, uh, as a fan, would you, would you not want him sold under any circumstances? I, I would not No, That's how, that's how price to see, uh, you know, but, um, that's my inter side talking, um, in terms of new, neutral, uh, obviously, a lot of people will want to see him at, at Tottenham because it's, you know, it's the Premier League and, you know, um, but uh, yeah, no, I, I, I would I would not want to see him go. Um, but, you know, that's that's football. So I'm sure we'd get, you know, a, a good replacement as well. Uh, probably not as good. <laughs> um, Let's talk guys like Bremer potentially going on the going the other way. Yes, exactly. Um, but Bremer, Bremer is the De Vrij replacement because um, uh, I think De Vrij, he his contract expires next year, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, apart from that, he's, I think, what, 30, 31, something like that. Um, so we, we were looking, the, the club, at least, as far as I understand, we're looking at Bremer as the long-term De Vrij replacement. Screen years, 26, 27, give or take. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it would have been great. But, you know, that's how it is. Um, so, 
I think I think the fee is if I'm if I'm not wrong, the fee is like what sixty million, seventy million that we're about asking for. Yeah, about sixty million euros. Yeah. So, you know, it is how it is. Uh, Maguire went for he went for eighty. Uh, eighty billion, I, yeah. So you know you. So, you yeah, things. I think it'll be a good deal in that context. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because you know you put things into perspective and you go, whoa, well, Maguire went for this much, and hmm. yeah. And the one other player we'll touch on is Latara Martinez because obviously he was subject to um, a bid from Spurs last summer, which nearly would have probably would have happened if Lukaku didn't end up moving to Chelsea. Hmm. Um, he's obviously ended up signing a new contract and had another brilliant season. Um, there's there's a rumours that Inter Milan needs me to make a profit this season, and it could be a choice between letting go of Bastoni and Martinez to kind of satisfy the books. Um, what, which one would you choose if you had to choose one of them to leave? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's uh, that's the question <laughs> of, of the ages now, isn't it? Um, yeah, I, I I've thought about that to some extent, and I would as 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 sad as I would be, I'd rather get rid of Bastoni only because of how much Martinez has meant to us in the past few years and how much he's grown. Um, you know, he's just, he's just crucial, crucial. Uh, he has his bad moments. Sometimes we've seen it this season as well, but he's just proven to be massive for us. Massive big game player turns up when you need him most, you know, stuff like that. So, and well, I don't know. Yeah, he's one player that Tottenham are, you know, probably going to regret missing out on him and Skriniar, who we nearly signed as well. There's a lot of connections between this Spurs into Milan team. Yeah. But yeah. Um, that Martinez, I think we had a chance to get him last season. And I think, do you reckon that chance is gone now for you? I would not, I would not put it, I would not say done, only because of our owners. They're unpredictable. Yeah. They're very unpredictable. And, and, and Inter fans are... are are more than ever before so um how should i put this they they want the owners to sell as 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 much as fast as possible they just want they just want to get away from this because you know um it is quite devastating for the club uh you know having to lose all these big names big players every summer um mm. knowing knowing very well that most of them don't want to leave. Um, Hakimi didn't want to leave. Um, he was essentially pushed out the door, uh, as you say, to balance the books. Um, so yeah, that 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 sort of that's how I would put that. Yeah. All right, fair enough, Anil. Look, it's been great chatting to you. Thank you for giving us your time. Absolutely. Um, good. Good luck for next season, and I'm uh, looking forward to seeing Perisic doing great things for Tottenham, and hopefully you have a great season as well. Awesome. Thank you so much for sure. I hope I hope Perisic wins some trophies with uh, with you guys. So that's what we're all hoping for, trust me. It's been a while. But awesome. Anil, thanks a lot. I'll see you very soon. Thank you everyone for watching this video. Like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, come on, you Spurs. Yeah!